Practice 40 Advisory is honoured to partner with the Standing Conference of Mediation Advocates, SCMA, and the Association of Mediation Assessors, Trainers, and Instructors, AMATI, to present Professor Goodman, who will be leading our upcoming Foundation and Professional Certificate courses. I am your host, Shukrina Salam from OTP Law Corporation, an affiliate of Practice 40 Advisory. Good morning, Professor Goodman. I hope you're doing well. Um, thank Good you morning. so much for thank you so much it's for a, taking time. It's a pleasure. So, well, welcome to London. You'll you'll see that because of global warming, it, it looks a little bit different now. Yeah, you have a very nice looking beach behind <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so as a completely new um, lawyer, as a person who's new to this industry, I have a couple of questions about mediation advocacy, and I've spoken to some other young lawyers who have expressed a lot of interest in what mediation advocacy is, uh, how it's different from mediation and things like that. So my first question for you is, what is mediation advocacy? Basically, it is uh, the skill set that you require for practicing as a party representative in mediation. I see. Um, That sounds quite similar to what a lawyer does, actually, representing Ah, someone. So That's true, but it's not the same. Now, So so what is the difference then between a mediation advocate, a lawyer, and perhaps a mediator? Let me stress that um, all all lawyers are capable of being all three. Um, Right. uh, subject to training, subject to developing skills and experience. But I mean, I can tell you, having been practicing at the bar in London for for over 40 years, that most lawyers consider themselves to be masters of the universe. They think they can do everything. Um, They don't even need training. Um, The the reality is that, that the orthodoxy of legal training means that they focus on winning their cases. Where you have a bilateral approach, win or lose, liability or or not liability, guilt or innocence, where you have a bilateral approach, you're being trained to persuade a court that your client is right, who is right, establishes liability. But in mediation, you're not really interested in establishing who is right. Because what you're trying to do is to use the process to enable both parties to secure a better outcome than they would have if they were going to court. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the, the question isn't who is right. Do you want to be right? The question is, do you want your client to be better off than he is now? And I believe that takes a different skill set because you're moving away from the purely adversarial approach. It doesn't mean that you're not acting in an adversarial capacity, but you are acting in a different way. Now you say, what is the difference between a a mediation advocate and a mediator? Well, the mediator, of course, is the independent third party neutral, who is effectively the manager of the process, but not everybody wants to be a mediator. People want to represent their clients, and this is simply another avenue by which, by which they can do so. To build on that, then, you know, you said that a lawyer would require some training to become a good mediation advocate. What are the skills that would differentiate a mediation advocate from a lawyer? As I focus on what the lawyer does, the lawyer is trained by a, a certain degree of orthodoxy in a bilateral process, which means that the lawyer is trained to try and persuade the court that his his client's case is is correct. However, in mediation, you're not trying to do any of those things. Mediation is a process which is designed simply to have your client obtain a better outcome than they would be able to if they fought the dispute. I mean, the curious thing, of course, is that Both clients need to have a better outcome in order to bring about a settlement of the dispute. 
And in a sense, the mediation advocate is working in harmony, both with the mediator and the lawyer on the other side, in order to try and bring about this process. And, and therefore, the instinctive collaborate, the, the instinctive competitive or combative or adversarial nature by which the lawyer is trained has to be modified or diffused so that the mediation advocate can work collaboratively and uh, bring about um, a settlement which is suitable for both sides rather than simply for, for his own client to gain a, be a better outcome. So you mentioned that a mediation advocate would have to adjust uh, his or her combative nature to make the process less adversarial. So I would say, actually, I would say it's, it's slightly more than that. Most lawyers that I speak to who go through these courses recognize that it actually requires almost a complete change of mindset. And it's, it's very interesting because you know, they're learning about the true nature of negotiation. And they're also learning about negotiation in circumstances where they have a third party neutral that they can use. And, and these are skills which you tend to develop over time. But the, the begin, beginning, of course, is we're trying to create taught skills to sit alongside the, the, the skills they've already been taught um, in the exercise of their legal work. And of course, Nobody's asking them to forget that they're lawyers, but by and large, um, this is really um, a development of, of core skills. What are the situations uh, where a mediation advocate would be most needed or useful? Firstly, where the object of the enterprise is to try and restore, preserve, reintegrate the relationship between the parties, which has been fractured by litigation or the threat of litigation. And, and therefore you're looking particularly at circumstances where the parties either have to or might wish to continue with a relationship. So for example, a long-term commercial relationship, which has perhaps been damaged by difficulties in the supply chain, or um, a commercial relationship where a party is, is, is threatened by insolvency. And it may, it may only be possible to continue the relationship by renegotiating the contract. Now, a court cannot renegotiate a contract, but, but a mediation is a perfect vehicle for, for, for doing that. And particularly now, when, when so many commercial institutions or, or other institutions are under pressure because of the consequences of COVID, um, this seems to me to be an ideal opportunity to boost mediation in all its forms, uh, mm -hmm. both within Singapore and, and doing cross-border work. Thank you so much, Professor Goodman. I feel that um, your answers, those were like a crash course already to <laughs> mediation <laughs> advocacy. I already learned so much just from your answers. If someone like me is very interested in signing up for your course, for the training, um, I have a couple of questions relating to the course itself. So first of all, is the mediation advocacy course strictly for practicing lawyers? From my own perspective, I would say no. And the reason is that there is no locus standi, there is no right of audience in mediation. I mean, subject to, subject to um, the family justice rules, uh, any, a party can be represented by anybody in mediation. And okay. to that extent, um, th there, are, there are people who are already engaged in, in representing others on a professional basis. Uh, so, for example, um, your, your accountant or your tax advisor can represent you to the revenue. Um, uh, m many property professionals, estate managers, or, or, or valuers, or surveyors, um, they, they can represent somebody in, in discussing rating and valuation, um, or rent reviews. So it's not uncommon for non-lawyers to appear in situations which are concerned with the resolution of disputes. 
I think it's very useful for other professionals to hone different skills. What areas of law or types of mediation will this cause cover? I, I do think that in order to get the best out of um, the mediation process, um, party representatives should know a, a, at least the basics of contract law and the basics of the law of either tort or civil rights or, or property rights in Singapore. Uh, it, it seems to me that one of the functions of the mediation advocate is, is to understand what is likely to happen if no agreement can be reached. And, and that is, I think, an advisory role. Um, and I, I don't know whether you're personally familiar with negotiation, but um, there are issues concerning um, the minimum levels of, of, of what you're trying to achieve in negotiation, yeah. which we call the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Yeah. And therefore, the, the, the mediation advocate should know how to create um, and identify that which is needed by the client and also marshal, guide the client towards that. Um, thank you, Professor Goodman, for all um, your previous explanations. Um, and in a larger scheme of things, how do you see this course paving the way for mediation advocacy in Singapore? I, I would like to see mediation advocacy develop in Singapore in a way that it is uh, moving elsewhere. I, I'm very conscious that um, young people, students in particular, young lawyers, um, all over the world, they participate in uh, international mediation competitions. And, and um, these are very popular. And they show me that uh, youngsters in, in universities are, are developing these skills. Um, and and I, I want to try and build on, on these skills. And here's a secret, which I'll just tell you, uh, Shukrina, nobody else, okay? This is just between <laughs> us. What I'm teaching people on the course is to understand that in the future, it's going to be less about what is important for the law and much more about what is important to the client. Because we, we as lawyers, we, we take the client and we say, oh yes, all very interesting, but it's not relevant so far as the law is concerned. Mm -hmm. But the client says, but it's relevant to me. Yeah. So, so why, shouldn't, why shouldn't we start by looking at what's relevant to the client rather than what's relevant to the law? Yeah. And, and in the future, if lawyers want to retain business, if they want to grow business, they need to adopt this modern approach and they need to understand they need to understand that the way in which the world is connected means they have to have these skills if, if businessmen come to a lawyer and the lawyer doesn't have those skills they will go elsewhere or the businessmen will do it for themselves and the lawyer will be shut out look when it's perfectly possible to keep going without the attribution of, of blame why fight your way out of a dispute when you can trade your way out of a dispute and, and these are all ideas that I want to expound on this course. And I want these ideas to, to, you know, to, I want to pick up and run with these ideas with a group of enthusiastic young people, lawyers, non-lawyers, it doesn't matter as long as they have decent business English. And, and what we're going to do is to, is, to, is to piggyback on the great success that Singapore has always been in, in mediation within the world. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much to Professor Goodman for chatting with us. Practice Forte is proud to partner with Professor Goodman and be able to take the lead in advancing mediation advocacy in Singapore. We are certain that this course will be able to mold great mediation advocates out of our lawyers here and strengthen Singapore's position as a mediation hub in the region.